Hello everybody and welcome to yet another video of thinking like a numerologist. I am producing these videos and sharing them with you because I believe that numerology holds an incredible depth, wisdom and accuracy that is very often not depicted well enough through books or websites. Very often this knowledge is flattened and what we see and what we get is usually very shallow interpretations of what the numbers are and what the different calculations in our own numerological chart mean. In this video, I want to open our mind, broaden our understanding of what numerology really is and how it can be applied and used to um, distinguish very specific phenomena in people's lives and energies so that we can make proper and deep diagnosis. So let's jump into today's subject. Today I'm going to talk about how we can see in a chart, in a numerological chart, the difference between what a person might be thinking about themselves. In other words, what is their self-image? How do they think themselves to be? What kind of person they imagine themselves to be versus what they actually are deep within? Very often we might think about ourselves, oh, I'm such an um, open-minded, liberal person, but perhaps deep within, I'm a little bit more selfish. I'm actually more self-centered. So, enough with words. Let's jump right in and see the numbers hands-on. So I'll use my beloved software right here and my touch screen, which I'm always proud of. Let's take the first example, just the one I, I mentioned. Let's, have a, I ha, let's say I have a head number 9, heart number 1, hands number 8, and legs number two. Okay. Now, my most core energies are always going to be first these two numbers, the heart number, number one, and the hands number, number eight. Remember that the fact I am drawing or writing down the eight and two sides is only for visual reasons so that we understand we're talking about the hands. It's only one calculation. And so we have one and eight. One and eight are very aggressive, willful, powerful, focused on themselves, focused on advancing and moving forward on domination and asserting their will they're not so much focused on what others need, what others are feeling. They're not feeling-oriented numbers. They're not emotion-oriented numbers. They're very controlling, right? This is the spine, we can say, the actual deepest infrastructure of our chart. Heart and hands. However, interestingly, in the head, we have a number nine. Let me change the two. I, I, wanted, I wanted to write an eight in the legs and I wrote a two. Forgive me, it's, just, it's not, it doesn't work with the demonstration that I wanted to do. So let's change it to an eight. That was my initial intention. And then I have a nine in the head. Nine in the head means that I wish for something open I want to live like in a very open way. I want to express myself, my dream, my imagination of how I want to be is very open and liberal and like an expanded experience. I'm someone who's just open to all things, places, people and so on. Now there is a truth to that. I have an open head, but my deeper, more emotional nature, my deeper the, the, the deeper qualities that actually constitute what I am are actually more selfish. Now, it's even more empowered when, and here, let's look at that together. Sorry, I'll just correct this little thing here. Right, when I have the legs number also appear as an eight, right? So we have eight, one, and eight. Heart, hands, legs, all the other numbers of my body are literally very self-centered. 
very much thinking about their own interests in terms of expression, in terms of will, in terms of doing and acting, but my head, the nine over here, right? The nine over here feels and thinks about itself something different. Now, usually, or in a normal case when the numbers are not so different, right? Here we have this selfless, right? And here we have more the selfish energies. All of this triangle, right? When we have such a difference, right, between those two, the head and all the body, we can deduct, we can understand that we have a case of someone whose head and rest of being are not necessarily in complete sync. They're not fully synchronized or aligned, which can create a case that a person imagines something about themselves. They have a self-image that does not correlate with the rest of their energy. It's not congruent with the rest of their being. Let me demonstrate that through another example, just so it becomes a little bit clearer, if it hasn't until now. <clears throat> I'll just erase this one. Okay. Good. Now, let's say I have uh, I have an eight head number, I have a two heart number, six hands number, and a three legs number. In this case, okay, first we're checking the head versus the rest of the body and what we can see is remember first we check those core energies here the heart and the hands right the heart and the hands here are deeply feminine numbers two and six perhaps the most sensitive emotionally speaking numbers soft and open willing to help willing to see the other person numbers that deal with care and uh, interpersonal relationships, intimacy. If we add the three to this equation, we have here a whole triangle of numbers that is very emotionally oriented. Three is also an emotional number. It's maybe not as caring as the two and six. However, it's still deeply feminine in its nature and emotional oriented, emotionally oriented. But here, the person thinks and has their aspirations with backed up by the eight energy, right? So we have here something different. This person might imagine, oh, I am so strong. I am, I believe in success. I believe in achieving. I believe in being great. I believe we should all assert our power and be powerful in this world, etc., etc. Of course, I'm kind of exact pushing it a bit to the edge to give us like this archetypal example. While inside of me, actually, I'm not that person at all, right? Inside, here, inside, look, I'm a super soft and caring person, very compassionate, very sensitive. But I might think of myself, oh, I am strong. I should be strong, right? I should appear in a certain way. And I might to some degree overlook my actual qualities, my deeper core. Again, don't get me wrong. Let's, let's, uh, I want to say that the head number is very central. Definitely I have the eight, exactly as in the previous example, I also have the nine. But there, it, when, when the head is so different, right? is so different than the body, right? There's a great difference. Then I understand that there is a kind of disconnection that can appear. 
that causes a person to have a self-image that's disconnected from reality. So here you go, my friends. I hope this gives you yet another way to look at numerology in a more profound way to see the subtle, the subtle dynamics that happen within our own mind and psyche and psychology, to see how the energies work inside of us in a multidimensional, deep, profound way and form our intricate and specific behaviors. And this is my uh, attempt and purpose with these videos to make you think and see the depth, the profundity of numerology. I hope this is helpful for you. Remember, practice makes perfect. If you want to understand numerology, you must practice, 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 learn as much as you can. Thank you for listening. And of course, I'll see you in the next videos. Remember, you can subscribe to me on YouTube. You can follow me on Facebook and connect to me personally if you want a numerology reading or study numerology with me through my website. I thank you so much and have a blessed day.